Welcome. This is the English language translation of the Open Sensor Data Talk by Felix Erdmann, live from the 36 Chaos Computer Congress in Leipzig. All talks at Congress are live translated between German and English and to one additional language. Visit c3lingo.org for more details and information on how to access the streams. We appreciate your feedback. Please use the hashtag, hashtag C3T. Your translators for these talks are Kvi, VH1, and Pete Priority. So please a round of applause for Felix Erdmann. Hello together, thank you for coming and thank you for this introduction. This nearly covers my whole first slide. I will be talking about open sensor data for everybody, based on open source, open hardware and educational resources. Um, it's an open sense block project by the University of Münster. And we started this a few years ago with um, small Arduino kits and went into the citizen science project um, field. And first I would like to tell you something about myself. My name is Felix Erdmann. In 2012 I was a um, student intern at the Institute for um, uh, Geology, Information Science, and I had first contact with sensor data and Arduino and different kinds of sensors, environment sensors, uh, environment data, and I put this small module on a, on a drone, and that was basically my first point when I started with this field. After graduating from high school, I studied this field and um, graduated uh, from university. And now I'm a teaching assistant at um, the SenseBook project at the university. What is SenseBox? Who has heard of that? Uh, Sensebox is a DIY toolkit for stationary and mobile sensor stations based on open hardware, especially on the Arduino platform. And we got different versions of the Sensebox um, that we developed and we distribute them to cover different um, fields and areas so that everybody, every citizen can become a scientist. And the other field is a digital education. We want to connect with uh, institutes of education, high schools, and we want to show students that coding is not as difficult as it sounds. And we want to establish a certain understanding of coding. The other product is the Open Sense Map, which is a web-based platform opensense.org, um, where everybody can register his or her sensor station and look at um, the data collected there. We have different tools there to visualize data. So one field is citizen science, and everybody can become a scientist and participate in science. There are different levels for that. The lowest level is for users to simply gather data up to the highest level, which means that the user not just gathers data, but also interprets data and um, can publish scientific findings. And this is why we developed the Sensebox Home. This here is in Sao Paulo. It's a plug-and-play sensor station. You, you do not have to um, assemble a lot. You just plug it in with a USB 
port and you can gather environment data with this. It can be tra transmitted via um, uh, Wi-Fi or other means. The other equivalent for education is Sensebox Edo. We have a microcontroller here and different sensors. Usually it's a temperature, um, humidity, um, uh, pressure. And um, you could also measure particles in the air. It's also plug and play. Bei der Sensebox Edu ist es ein bisschen anders. Da muss man, also kann man auch alles zusammenstecken. Da sind aber noch ein paar mehr Komponenten drin. Da haben wir hier ein paar mehr Komponenten drin. Drehregler, Buttons, Display. Das kann man alles manuell anschließen. Und man kann das manuell anschließen. Und man kann die Box an sich programmieren. Und dann kann man das programmieren. Dieses Programmiertool von Google genommen. Das we created, uh, we, we use Google's um, um, programming tool. Like in Scratch, uh, you um, put together different um, pieces. And with this interface, you can easily assemble your own code. It's meant for younger students who do not have any experience with coding. The more experienced students can then just enter code like we see on the red side here. All this is based, like I said before, on open hardware. We've developed our own module based on Arduino. It's the cell Sandbox MCU. And the reason why we've done that is because we are using Arduino Uno, which we started on that you couldn't use all sensors at the same time um, and you can upload the code. Um, the memory capacity wasn't high enough, so therefore we added this module and modified it. We have different ports, I2C, analog, digital and serial ports. Um, and they have plugs which you can only plug in one way so that you can't get a short circuit with the sensors. So it's rather easy to uh, build your own sensor station. It has two XP ports which you can transfer data from, be it via Wi-Fi, uh, via LoRa or over an SD module where they are saved. So you can do it offline and, and collect them with a data card um, and then have a look at them at home. Um, all the um, circuit layouts, the GUBA files and libraries, they are open, they are all available on GitHub, so everybody who has the means of uh, building it, they can um, solder and assemble it themselves. As I said before, the OpenSense map is the backbone of the project, so everybody can register their own box, um, get sent the source code, and then can upload their measure data. As you can see here, uh, on the whole world, we are distributed, um, of course, in Germany and in Europe, there's the most, but there are on even crazier locations, there are boxes which send their data onto this platform and the way you can view them from. In addition, um, there is small analysis uh, for the data. On the map, when you click on a station, you can see details, you can see information, and you can diagrams from data. For example, somebody uploads a picture, you can see the temperature on the temperature uh, curve of this box. As I said before, uh, this is all open here, so the open sense map, uh, not so not just sense boxes can sense, send the data there, but everybody can. So if you've got something else, or if you have Raspberry Pi or an ISP, you can send it onto this platform. Um, we have an open API with REST, so uh, it can accept all kinds of data. F some examples are the... Uh, um, a seed box where it can measure the water flow and distribution direction um, of uh, the, the flood. You can 
um, measure air data uh, rather easily inserted it into this platform. Um, then there are sort of more unusual ones which are being built in, in the garden which measure wind direction and speed. Um, smart citizen uh, devices can also send that and obviously the sandbox and even self-built stations and systems. And then we're not limiting this to bad phenomena, so, but you can measure God's temperature, um, air humidity, sound, all sorts of gases. As long as you can measure it, you can upload it. So the source code is freely available on GitHub, um, which is the sketch, the code that's on the Arduino, the Sensebox MPU, the front end, the back end, uh, all the API and the services which we developed. Um, you can uh, download them and look at the source code. Um, the website and the teaching materials. This is all available on GitHub and the API is also open so everybody can upload their data. So these are all educational resources. Uh, they are available for teachers um, and institutions. Um, because the hurdle to get into using the sandbox can be quite large. So many people don't know how to use it, don't have the time to get used to it, and we want to lower the hurdles of entry for digital education. So I wanted easier to develop projects um, that you can move along. So uh, theory and practice, uh, for example, it's here a traffic counter with an ultrasonic distance counter which you can use to measure distances. And in this example, it shows you theory on how to check the axis and how to connect the sensor, um, what you can do with the data. One example that was used in school, and then the, the students, they could uh, check the amount of traffic in front of the school, um, and then they really measured how many cars were driving past the school in about a quarter an hour, and then we could um, really put facts onto the problem, so when we say there's too much traffic but nobody really knows, in this case we can rather easily uh, get the data and then analyze what um, we can change. Just a little bit on the timeline. So for me personally, the project started in 2012 when I was a pupil at, um, doing some um, volunteering at the university and then the first first uh, models were used in, in teaching all based on Yudin Yunu in all sorts of um, combinations with devices and I put this kit on a drone, flew it around. The real start was 2016. We got a um, support from the grant from the uh, German Ministry of Education, um, and we got all sorts of results on what ends for the Open Sense Map for all sorts of modules um, that you could interpolate data um, to estimate it between different data, so temperature, for example, from the hardware. We did a 3D printer to build um, cases to ensure the sun wouldn't go into the sensors that easily. We tested under extreme conditions in Swiss mountains with super cold temperatures or lots of snow. And that was a project for testing. That's what what finished, and then we have a no. It's called Sandblock Pro, which just got funding also from the German Education Ministry, also for three minutes, uh, for three years. And we want to use professional um, users and use really high cost centers. Right now, it's just low cost. The centers are are good and, and nice, but. The real professional users can't really do something with them, so we can use different sensors and check the in with the industry if the industry is interested in this.
On the software side, on the open sense map, uh, the, you can see different analysis methods, so you better compare the data. We asked ourselves at some point, it's a citizen science project, so open science, it's called open science, and we want to, the data to be reproducible. But we ask ourselves, who really participates here? Because we say everyone can participate, everyone can take over different tasks. But what what are what kind of people are there? So in the, in, in the master's uh, thesis, we did a survey and and try to figure out who are the participants. It's mostly men. So who would have thought? And the the age is between 30 and 55 is uh, is the highest portion. What's interesting is that a lot of participants have uh, academic backgrounds, they have a bachelor, master or a diploma. And from this area there's a lot of uh, participants. We, we, we rather thought that everyone can partici participate, but apparently a lot of people are not interested in, or maybe the hurdles are too large, but it's mostly ac uh, academics that participate in this project. Uh, for, for some background, so the, the users we asked are all, all users that are registered on Open Sense Map. So all the users that regi registered their station once and uploaded some data, and it's not people who just download the data and uh, we couldn't uh, get the data of these people. So what's the motivation of, of the participants to participate here? So we can say more or less that everyone likes to measure environment data, and collect them and publish them. So they don't, don't just want them to themselves, so, but they want to share them and maybe even influence political decisions. In the area of communication, uh, we want to support the community, or one wants to support the community, one wants to help in order to solve certain problems, one wants to maybe even encourage other people to participate, but really to, to meet other people, that, was, that wasn't a big part or a goal for these participants. A lot of the people uh, thought that, that, that more should be done with the data, like a big, bigger analysis, but to participate in the scientific process themselves or to write a, uh, even a publication, people didn't really want to do that. And you can also see this from the main usage of Open Sense Map. The most people just want to share that data, to measure the data, and just to participate, to contribute. But in the end, they just look at the data, create, create diagrams, and uh, add sensors, play with the boxes. An analysis of the data through interpolation, for example, is, has a very low, low priority and is not used. A lot. We collect quite a big amount of data, so we're already in the big data area. We have about 5,700 registered boxes, uh, five, five to 6,000 measurements per minute, and we have about 3.9 billion uh, saved measurements. Everyone can download all the data by themselves and sort of work with it. It's not a really problem because you only saw the save the raw data, not the validation of data, in order to get the data that the users really measure. Uh, on the whole project, especially in the infrastructure, we have some problems. We have quite hungry servers that are running in the cloud on AWS, but it's going to be moved to the OpenStack at the Uni University of Münster. They require quite a lot of uh, memory and uh, uh, hard drive space. The database is uh, MongoDB with four collections. 
And there we have the problem that since it's really a huge database, the indexing and the request of statistics takes, takes a long time because the whole table has to be parsed in order to, to grasp the data and to compute statistics. And that's basically one reason, because we kept the original architecture that originated from a bachelor thesis, so we started with a prototype and it just grew and grew, more and more data came in, and now we have this 3.9 billion data points, and now we have to start thinking about how to, how to uh, about a more efficient way to store this. As said, we only save the raw data, so we don't really modify the data, and the data, data is also not validated. So from this, other problems uh, originate if you want to analyze the data. So this is a screenshot from this, this morning, from the interpolation here in, in Leipzig. We can see the temperature. The, com the calculated temperature between different boxes. Uh, I chose only boxes that are set up outside, and we can see that everything is nice, nice and green. But in the top right, there is a box that's orange red, and that means it's more than 20.7 degrees Celsius. And I thought mm, this can't be quite right. Uh, a box that's outside and measures 20, 20 degrees Celsius. And it's, uh, I look a little bit close, more closer, and uh, it turns out that's constantly around 20 degrees. So you can reduce some that. It's probably inside, and uh, so we can't really do the the interpolation here because this falsifies the measurement. On the other side here in Hamburg, this is another screenshot. There's a sensor broken in the middle, uh, somewhere in Hamburg, constantly measuring about minus 150 degrees Celsius. So this interpolation here also doesn't really work. And that's another goal that should supposed to come in the future to detect these kind of um, exceptional data points and to take them out of the... Uh, uh, the, the, the data set that you want to analyze. So in the future, the, the development is done by the re-EU Corporation and the University, and, and, and at the University in the, within the, the support of the BMBF project. So more materials will be added, more projects for the educational area, the hard and software will will also be continue to be improved. We're trying to new, uh, add new sensors and add a Wikipedia for all the sensors to have a uniform system. And a, uh, you, you get a, a summary what kind of s sensors there are and what kind of deviations can come from this. So the sensors we, one of the sensors we are using, for example, is very uh, uh, aff affected by, by humidity. So it's just things to keep in mind when you look at your data. Our, our goal is that this project is mostly community-driven. So the further development of the software happens on open source basis. So everyone can, can participate if he wants to, if they want to. And this uh, under the uh, umbrella of a uh, common uh, uh, company and uh, independent support. So we started a Discord uh, forum where everyone can register and can exchange ideas with each other and answer the questions of other users. By the way, questions. So this is the end of my talk. Thank you very much for your attention. And we have a few minutes so that I can answer questions. Thank you very much. Danke, Felix. Um, ja, da sehe ich schon die erste Frage. Und zwar uh, alle der Hinweis. Thanks for listening to the English translation of Open Sensor Data for Everybody at the 36 Case Communication Congress. Your translators were. 
P priority? VH1 and Kui. We appreciate your feedback. Please email us at hello at c3lingo.org or use the hashtag C3T on Twitter. So now we've got a question from the audience asking if they're afraid of uh, the sensor that is flooded and the answer is yes, that could of course happen. Um, that would be um, a worst case, but we are of course working to um, install measurements that that doesn't happen. Then we've got a question. A question from the internet? Yeah. So the question from the internet is for one. Can you uh, recommend a s what kind of sensor? I've, I've tried this before. I've, I've I uh, found one that has three poles, two for power, and one that just gives me back a resistance. And then it isn't really that hard, and you've got to uh, calculate the uh, resistance in a wind direction, but I don't have clear recommendations for this one. Another question from the internet. And the question, the answer is, can, can the Sensebox do power over Ethernet? Knappe Fragen, knappe Antworten. Um, dann haben wir hier Mikrofon 2 noch eine Frage. Apart from the motivation of educational work and scientific work, are there any other possibilities of interest, any other fields of interest. I could imagine, for example, communities that people want to know how their environment is doing, if they're close to, to, to an airport, whether it's recognized that it's too loud over there, and we need valid data for those institutions if we go public. So isn't there management necessary to, um, to validify all the results? Yes, that's true. So in the current situation, everybody can just put a sensor into your own garden and collect data with it. But that um, at the current time, of course, if you have a tree and you put your sensor just halfway below it and then the sun is coming over, then suddenly the, um, the amount of sun suddenly reduces during the day when the shadow is coming over. And this is, of course, what you should be reducing. So if you look at the current set of PVD, of course, currently this is a very nice open coast, so there it is. Um, a temperature without any of these kind of error sources. So this is something that really needs to be taken into account. On the other hand, however, the sensors and the components that we're using are quite cheap and therefore um, it's quite relative and easy to just kind of make a measurement setup and to get your first data. Um, and then maybe later when you've got first results, then you can go to official places, for example, at the airport, and um, and then you go to the local or the uh, county government, and then maybe you give them their data, and then you can progress. Is there a historical background why MongoDB was used in another data bank? Well, um, there's no clear reason for this. Uh, so during my bachelor thesis, I just used MongoDB as my first database. I know this wasn't uh, just done as now, but some time ago. Um, and some of these are quite older versions of these. But um, a nice influx database, something like that, would make much more sense, I agree, but uh, not just Mongo. Ja, haben wir noch eine Frage aus dem Internet? Alle Fragen geklärt. Ein Wunder mit diesem Internet. So it seems all ja, questions from the Internet were solved. Stelle sagen schon einmal noch herzlichen Dank an Felix Erdmann für diesen Talk. So now I just want to give a big uh, thank you to Felix Erdmann for this talk.